You're watching Local 5 News at 10 in HD. We are Iowa's most accurate weather team, and we start with your forecast first. Well, hi, everyone. A pretty quiet night out there. We've got no rain out there. Of course, we had the rain this morning. We had clouds most of the morning and a little bit this afternoon. They're gone now, though. It's going to be a quiet night. Temperatures are in the 70s. There's really no big thunderstorms on the horizon, just a few clouds out there. So tomorrow morning, expect a few clouds in the morning, but dry conditions. You don't have to drive through rain tomorrow, but the heat is going to build, and we'll talk about how hot it's going to get on Thursday coming up. I trusted them because I was foolish. A nationwide Facebook scam targeting teenage girls hits the Metro tonight. How you can make sure your children don't fall prey. Then Metro cops create better relationships in the neighborhoods they serve after national officer involved shooting incidents have created a tense environment. Plus, no weapons in the workplace for Story County employees. How their new policy affects you. Local 5 News at 10 in HD starts now. We are Iowa. Dallas. Baton Rouge. Shot fired. Officer down. Got a city officer down. Shot fired. Minnesota. Oh, he had, you told him to get his ID, sir, and his driver's license. Officer-involved shootings are becoming an all-too-familiar occurrence in America, and it's dividing the nation. Black Lives Matter. Or Blue Lives Matter. And those tweets just show a glimpse of the conversation happening on social media right now. Tonight, officers are looking to mend that divide. Good evening and welcome to Local 5 News. I'm Jack Miller. Stephanie has the night off. Metro officers are out in their communities tonight working to reestablish relations during national night out events. They've been doing this for 33 years now, but this year it seems to have a little more urgency. Local 5's Jacob Pecklow was at the events tonight and joins us now with more on tonight's big story. Jacob? Jack, it may be a tense time between some people and police officers, but tonight you could just see a lot of those emotions just melting away. And at the heart of all this is communication. Officers believe that's what building community is really all about. All right, so you eat it. This party in the park near Drake University <laughs> has all the ingredients for pure joy. It's great for him to be able to see staples of the community like police officers and firefighters and just our neighbors. So he knows that uh, this is a safe place and it's a, it's a great place to grow up. For organizers of events like National Night Out, it's an elixir that takes on an even greater harmony when police officers join in. I'm about to right here. And then I'll give you one for later. For kids of all ages, um, the earlier that you get them introduced to something, the more normal it will be for them. I think we've been ahead of the curve when it comes to the relationship that we have with our community. And um, so we, we haven't changed anything other than uh, inviting more people out. As National Night Out grows in popularity, Des Moines police are hoping to foster these relationships in the community. There you go, buddy. <laughs> I think it's an unfortunate reality of human condition. Um, thankfully, Des Moines is a place where... You know, we're relatively safe. Despite several national tragedies involving officers this year, the efforts from those 27 years and counting in Des Moines are about more than building familiarity. You can't put enough emphasis on the relationships and how they benefit us moving down the road. It's so much easier to solve problems when you're working with people that you know, or at least people that you trust. There have been displays of solidarity to show the police that their lives are pivotal to the success of the community. Am I right? How are you? That connectedness can make a huge difference when the officers need the public's help the most. It motivates our officers to know that they've got good support, not just within our walls at our department, but out in the community. And Perisic says officers will always encourage citizens to call in something that they might see as dangerous, even if it's a false alarm. They'd much rather that be the case in case it turns out to be something much bigger. Live in the studio, Jacob Pecklow, Local 5 News, We Are Iowa. Jacob, thanks. Central Iowa has had its share of officer-involved shootings in the last two years. We've had three separate incidents, one in Boone, one in Urbandale, and one in Des Moines. In all the cases, no charges were filed against the officers involved, and to help be more more transparent, many of the Metro departments are now getting body cameras on their officers. 
A Facebook scam is targeting teenage girls in Johnston tonight. Police there have heard from several teenagers in the past few weeks who say they got Facebook messages from someone claiming to be with a modeling agency. They're trying to get them to send nude photos or videos, then are using those images to turn around and extort the victims. And the blackmail they're using is once they get that first picture, they say, if you don't send me more, I'm going to send it to everybody on your contact list, which includes grandma and grandpa, mom and dad, friends. And so that's a lot of incentive for them to keep going. Once that first one goes out, you can't bring it back. Local 5 is on your side to make sure you and your kids don't fall prey to this same scam. Local 5's Ashley Carrasco spoke to one of the victims tonight, and that woman is reaching out to girls her age, telling them what she did wrong. Ashley? Jack, this young woman behind me says it all started with a simple Facebook message about some of her modeling photos. Week, weeks later, she lives with regret. I trusted them because I was foolish, and it was a huge mistake that I did. At 18 years old, Heather Krejci has big dreams. He messaged me saying, hey, I see some, you do some modeling stuff. Would you be interested in doing a little bit more? Flattered, she messaged the person back. He asked for a little, like, prof, like a little profile, so I sent him a few of the pics from one of the modeling things I did. This all happened on Facebook. This guy, I didn't really know him, but he was friends with some of my friends, so I trusted them, so I accepted their friend request. Heather says the person began to build her trust by showing interest in her career, eventually leading to nude photos. And the next thing you know, it just switch, like a switch flips, and you don't know what to do in that moment. You're scared, you're terrified, you don't want this to get leaked. Heather says the person started threatening her. If she didn't send more, her photos would be leaked. She reported the incident and deleted her Facebook immediately, but it was too late. Scamming others are getting more creative. Drew Harden is the co-founder of Blue Compass, a digital marketing company in West Des Moines. He says these attacks are becoming more common and people need to be on high alert. If anyone is pushy with you online or asking for things you're a little uncomfortable to give, anything that seems fishy, it's always a good idea to take a step back and reevaluate the situation. One of the most effective ways of protecting yourself is by changing your password. It's a pain and people don't like to do it, but it is a smart thing to do. Heather warns girls to go through profiles and do your research before approving friends or responding to messages. This is a really scary experience to have that happen to you and not know what to do. It's after it's all done, you just think of it it's a mistake. It's just a huge mistake that you want to be done with. Blue Compass also warns people to learn about website privacy settings. Hardin says most of the time default settings are at the minimum. He also suggests parents download apps and get involved with social media. This way they know what their children are facing while on the internet. In the studio, Ashley Crosco, Local 5 News. We are Iowa. Ashley, thanks. If this happens to you or anybody you know, avoid further contact. Save the messages and then contact police immediately. Developing now in Clyde. Police need some help. 54-year-old Sandy Bland is missing tonight, and police are worried for her safety. She left her home in Clive late last night after saying she was feeling suicidal. They've checked the area, checked local hotels. They've come up with nothing so far. If you've seen Sandy Bland, please call police in Clive. Story County has a new weapons policy tonight after a supervisor unknowingly violated the rules. The Story County Board of Supervisors enacted a new policy this morning, banning county employees from carrying weapons into county buildings, even if they have a legal concealed carry permit. However, county deputies and other citizens who are authorized to carry as a part of their job, of course, still can carry those weapons. The policy was changed after one of the three supervisors carried his legally owned weapon into a meeting. To put in a policy like this, the board is empowered to do that. We're not empowered to, as I, as I read the law, we're not empowered to eliminate the opportunity for members of the public to, to carry when they uh, are certified. Um, so that's where we are.
Story County actually used Polk County's weapons in the workplace policy as a model for their own new policy. Well, take a good look at this guy. The Jasper County Sheriff's Office is looking for him tonight. 29-year-old Nicholas Hartgers is six feet tall, about 160 pounds. He has a lot of tattoos, we're told. He's wanted on several warrants, and police say he could be armed. If you have information on his whereabouts, Nicholas Hartgers, please call police in Jasper County. Coming up on Local 5 News at 10, an emotional ceremony for two very deserving Iowans who protected America. We'll take you there. And later in sports, changes to one of the Metro's most storied golf courses. What to expect now when you go out to play at Waveland. And the rain's going to take a break for a couple of days as the heat kicks in. I got your forecast coming up. Good morning, Iowa. It's trash, it's fashion. Why one fashion designer is turning heads with this wedding dress. We're going to tell you what it's made of tomorrow. You pointed at me with trash. Our forecasts, we'll get a little hot coming tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow on Good Morning, Iowa.